take him at his word. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need of him to be my Savior. That he would leave his place on high and come for sin. Hi, and welcome to some Time in the Word with Richmond Hill Community Church. I'm glad that you have taken some time to experience God's Word today. Whether you're on your own or whether you're in a neighborhood church, I am convinced that God has something for you personally, and God has something for us as a community of Jesus followers. Here at RHCC, we've been spending some time in the book of John, and we've been looking a little more closely at the seven I am statements of Jesus. And so far, we've covered I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the gate for the sheep, and when Jesus said, 
I am the Good Shepherd. If you'd like to catch up on these messages, you can head on over to our RHCC YouTube channel and you'll find that content there. So today we're going to take some time to reflect on the fifth powerful statement made by Jesus. And this statement by Jesus is not only one of the most profound statements in the entirety of the scriptures, but it is also a statement that is full of hope and promise. Now, to give us some context for this statement, context is always a good thing, we'll take some time to read the story that surrounds it. So, I'd invite you to pause the video here and open up whatever you're using to experience God's Word today to John chapter 11. And I want you to read verses 1 to 44. So that's John 11, verses 1 to 44. So go and read that, and we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Here, in this perhaps well-known story of Jesus performing the miracle of bringing his good friend Lazarus back from the dead, about halfway through, we find Jesus helping Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, to make sense of what had happened and what was about to happen and its eternal significance. It's here, in conversation with Martha, concerning the resurrection in the last day, that Jesus makes this powerful statement concerning himself. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and life. When Jesus said these words, he was claiming to be the one and only source of life. This statement is, as well as all others have been, a declaration of his divinity and his power to give life and light to all who believe in and follow him. Now, Jesus was not just referring here to physical life, of course, but to eternal life. Jesus came to give people life and that life more abundantly than they had ever experienced before. He came to give a life that is filled with purpose and meaning and joy. He came to give a life that is not just limited to this world, but a life that extends beyond this world, beyond the grave. What we know now that Mary and Martha may not have fully understood then was that the resurrection of Jesus after his crucifixion would become the ultimate proof of the truth that this statement held. Jesus died on the cross, but on the third day he rose again from the dead, and this was a miraculous event that transformed the lives of his disciples and subsequently the entire world. Through his resurrection, Jesus conquered death and sin and he made it possible for those who believe in and follow him to have eternal life. Today, the words of Jesus that immediately follow Jesus' I am statement here are very significant. In John eleven twenty-five 25 to 26, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he says this, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. This is such a powerful follow-up statement that would serve to remind Mary and Martha that they had a promised hope in him. A hope that death was not the end, but in fact, the beginning of a new life in Christ. And before long, they would actually witness this for themselves with their very own eyes. Now, 
when it comes to our lives today, believing in Jesus as the resurrection and the life means so, so very much. It means that we can have the assurance of eternal life. It means that we don't have to fear death because we know that our lives do not end in the grave. It means that we can live our lives with purpose and significance. It means knowing that we are called to be a part of something that is much bigger and greater than ourselves. As we reflect on these words of Jesus, let's remember that as his followers, we are in relationship with the true source of eternal life our faith in him. Long story short, he is the one true source, source of both physical and spiritual transformation. A transformation that moves us from death into life, from death into eternal life. You know, over the years, from time to time, Chris and I have had an opportunity to visit several butterfly sanctuaries. Maybe you have too. Well, on one of my visits, I was actually at the right place in the right time to witness the final stage of the process of physical transformation that happens to this beautiful insect. I truly believe that God has created the earth to reveal His glory. Reality is, a caterpillar spends its entire life crawling on the ground, limited by its physical form. It eats, and it grows, and it eats, and it grows, and eventually it forms a cocoon. And inside the cocoon, the caterpillar undergoes an absolutely miraculous transformation that is almost beyond belief. Its body dissolves and it emerges as a beautiful butterfly with wings that can carry it to new heights. We well, you know in the same way, we are like the caterpillar. We spend our lives on this earth and we're limited by our physical bodies. But when we die, our physical bodies will crumble and return to the dust from which they came. However, however, for those who believe in Jesus as the resurrection and the life, death is not the end, but the beginning of a glorious transformation. Just as the butterfly emerges from the cocoon, believers in Jesus will be transformed and given new bodies that are free from pain and sorrow and death. We will be able to fly and soar to new heights in the presence of God. Now, Perhaps you haven't really given much thought to that reality. And maybe you'll find a few moments today or this week to reflect upon that. Jesus' statement, I am the resurrection and the life, is a reminder to us that death is only the beginning of a miraculous transformation that leads us to eternal life with our Lord and Savior. Just as the caterpillar had to go through the process of transformation to become a butterfly, we too must go through this process of death to be transformed into our eternal bodies. So as you go about your day today or your week this week, I hope you can find the time to dwell upon the promise of eternal life and the hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. To take some time to dwell upon the fact that we can live our lives with purpose 
and significance. Knowing that we are called to be a part of something greater than ourselves. And also to take some time today or this week to dwell upon the fact that we can look forward to the day when we will be transformed and reunited with our Lord and Savior. Join me as we pray about these things today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can experience new life in relationship with your Son, Jesus. That you have promised that he would bring us that new life and that abundant life as we experience relationship with him. God, we thank you so very much in these moments that for those who believe in and follow your Son, Jesus, for those who are in relationship with you through him, will not taste death, but move from this life into eternal life. We thank you so much for that powerful statement that Jesus has placed, that Jesus said, that is recorded in the book of John, where he said, I am the resurrection and the life, and that those who believe in me will never die, but will live forever. God, uh, I fully realize that there may be people that are listening to this today that have not yet experienced a relationship with your son, Jesus. So God, I just want to pray for anyone who's listening to my voice, that you would spark within them a curiosity about who Jesus is and about what Jesus did for those whom you have created, for those whom you love, and that they would continue to seek you and seek a relationship with Jesus. God, we want to proclaim as a church that your son Jesus changes absolutely everything. And that as we come into relationship with him, as we learn to trust him, transformation begins as we invite him into our hearts but God that we uh, are then uh, we continue to be transformed that change is an ongoing process where we are changed into his likeness as we go closer in relationship with you through him so God help us to understand this today at a deep and fundamental level Help us to continue to explore your word and its transformational power in our lives. Help us to continue to explore who Jesus is and his transformational power in our lives. And help us to be able to communicate that with the people around us so that we all, all whom you have created, would be reconciled to yourself through Jesus. God, bless us today as we take part in some reflection together. As we dig deeper into your word in our neighborhood churches, or we dig deeper into your word as individuals, wherever we are, that we would be open to the reality of transformation that your word does and that relationship with your son Jesus does in our lives. Help us to dig deep. Help us to encourage each other. Help us to grow in relationship with you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Standing face to face
Stand beside the heroes of the 